What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of the best team in FIFA. Today we have got a Premier League 100k sweat team. Um, in episode one of the best team in FIFA, I bought a very, well built, sorry, I built a very expensive squad. We played some fuck rivals to get the um, but swap card. And a lot of the comments in there were that nobody could afford this team. This team is limited to only content creators and people with like disposable income. And that I'll never do a video on a team cheap enough. And so here today, I've got a team cheap enough. So if you guys could drop a thumbs up, that would be very much appreciated. Now, I've actually limited what we're doing here today to just bring it right down. Again, after based on you know a lot of the, the comments and stuff, like I built a lot of game plans in the first episode of the best team in FIFA. And a lot of people were explaining to me how... They don't, you know, they don't know when to use the game plans, how to use the game plans, etc. And, you know, what is the best time to change into different formations. So what we've got today is just one game plan into one formation that is kind of a one size fits all. This is for those of you guys. Now, I'm in Division 4 and we play very, very well with this team in Division 4. This team is going to be for those of you guys that are in Division 4 at the very least and lower and are just struggling to get to grips that just want a really strong, solid foundation that you can build from. Now, as I say, this team is worth about 100,000 coins. Of course, it will fluctuate depending on the time of day that you buy. In fact, on Xbox, you can get the team for 83,000 coins and on PlayStation, for some reason, it's up at 97,000 coins. And I want to explain to you how this also factors in chem styles because obviously every time we do a cheap squad and we put shadows and hunters on, people say, you know, the shadow and hunter chem styles are going to be worth more than the team itself. So I'm going to show you how not to best utilize that. So first and foremost, we're going to build the team. Then we're going to go and talk about two anomalies in the team that we want to get around. Then we're going to show you the, the game plan and the formation we switch into and how it works. And then we're going to get into some gameplay. So in goal, guys, first off the bat is going to be Pickford. So Pickford, according to Fuckbin, on PlayStation um, right now is worth around... He's not worth much. I think I bought him for like 2k coins, less than that even. Yeah, 2.4k coins for Pickford. So I bought him for bang on 2,000 coins, which again shows that you can get these players for cheaper than Fuckbin suggests. So this squad is a, a 100k squad. You know, if at this stage in the game, we've, we've already had the game now for, for those of you that have only had it like since its full release, 10, 15 days. For those of you, for the for the rest of you, maybe up towards two, you know, two and a half, three weeks. Uh, but Pickford goals in goal. So I would expect most people to have 100,000 coins by now or to be able to get there really easy via just doing SBCs and such. And then in at right back, guys, we're going to go for Pereira. Now, this is a really good card is Pereira. I'm going to build the defense first as well, guys, and then we're going to talk about the, the defense and, and the team because obviously for chemistry, in fact, I might build the team first and then go from there. So our two centre-backs are going to be Socrates and Eric Bailly. And then in at left back, we're going to be having Luke Shaw. Now, the first thing I want to show is that I have Socrates and Bailly on... Shadow chem styles. Eric Bai is a first owner. Socrates, I did go and put on. Oh, no, wait, Socrates is a first owner as well. However, what I want to show you guys is that you don't have to buy the player and then buy the chem style. If you actually just go and buy an Eric Bai, I think he's about 9,000 coins, maybe 9.2k. There you go, 9.2k for Eric Bai. None of these cards obviously have a shadow chem style unless you get really lucky. Some of them have anchor chem styles, but you probably won't find a shadow on Eric Bai down at his base price. However, if you just switch the chemistry style to shadow here, the shadow chem styles right now are selling for 3,000 coins. So as long as you can get him for less than 12,200, you're saving yourself coins. And the way his price is, is I think for 10,000 has Eric buys with shadows. There you go. There's five of them right there right now. So 9,800. And I'm sure you guys will be able to find one for 9,008, 9,600. So it's only a few hundred coins more for a buy with a shadow so that you don't have to buy him and then buy the shadow and the same is said for Socrates and all the other cards that we use shadow chem styles on during this team so I, I as I say I always see people in the comment section when I build teams say you never factor in the price of chem styles well you can't like you don't really need to because the chem styles are already on the players when you buy them if you're smart and then obviously the anchor chem styles are super cheap and i don't think you i think you could buy players with anchors for the exact price that they're actually worth so there's uh there's that so in terms of the price of this defense Pereira is currently going for 6400 we've got eric Bailly is currently going for about 9000 uh socrates is going for 
7,700 and Luke Shaw is very, very cheap. I think I bought him for, yeah, look at that. I bought him for a thousand coins. Now that is a banging price for a thousand coins. Into the midfield, guys, and I can't use it like that. Let's go to midfielders. We've got four midfielders here, uh, which won't make sense looking at them as they go into the team, but will make more sense as we build the team. First up is Mictarian. Next up, we have got ourselves um, Idris Gay, And then last but not least, we have got Ndidi. So this is going to be our midfield three. Uh, and then obviously we're going to move into our attack and again we'll look at chem stars and prices and stuff as we go forwards now in terms of uh, the prices for these Adrissa Gay is super super cheap 1700 and DD 1200 and Mictarian one of the more expensive players that we've got there at 11,000 coins but absolutely worth it and as you can see I didn't even have a chem star on him in the games that I played not for any particular reason. I actually, I like the way it boosts, the things it boosts with basic. Even though the defensive boost is a bit of a waste. I like the ball control, dribbling agility, the short pass, long pass and vision. I like the shot power and I like the sprint speed. I, I, I have, funnily enough, I, I you, you could give this guy a bit of anything for a chem style to make him even more well-rounded. But I genuinely think that basic is a good chem style for him. And then we look at the left wing striker and right wing. And so for the attack, guys... We have got up at the left wing spot. We are going to have ourselves, uh, let's go for the left wing. There we go, left wing. We're going to have ourselves Marcus Rashford. Uh, again, one of the more expensive players in the whole team. In fact, the most expensive player in the whole team at 23,000 coins. And as you can see, I don't have hunters on these guys in general. I've only got three shadows on uh, Socrates, Bailly and Adrissa Gay. And then in at the striker spot, guys, we've got Alex Lacazette. A uh, really, really good striker for his price. Now, he is only 18,000 coins. So between Rashford and Lacazette, they actually make up most of the coins that this whole team is. Uh, co combined between them, over 40,000 coins. With Mkhitaryan as well, you're looking at 50,000 of your 100,000 coin budget in those three players. So if you've got another player that you're going to fit in there instead, then go nuts. And then the final player on the whole squad, guys, is actually going to be player of the month, Lucas. And the reason why we picked him is because, well, a few reasons. Number one, Everyone has him already. Number two, he is so cheap. His SBC is under 40,000 coins. <clears throat> it's still available for three more days and you can't lose on it. If you have 40,000 coins in your account right now and you don't have Lucas, go and start completing his SBC, sell everything you get out of the packs and you will come out as a net positive. You will make coins by completing this Lucas SBC. And again, as long as you're smart with how you buy players and how you use players in the SBCs to actually get him for the absolute cheapest. You know, don't go and follow the exact routes that Footbin suggests. And if you do, go and snipe those players so you can get it 10, 12% cheaper. And you're actually only going to spend about 30 to 35,000 coins on this Lucas. So if you have the Lucas, use the Lucas. If you don't have the Lucas, you can use pretty much any right wing from the Premier League here. But this is the start of the squad, guys. This is the, well, this is the squad. So... In terms of chem styles, Pickford doesn't get any chem style because I like the plus 10 boost across the board. I think it's stupidly overpowered, but I'll take it. Uh, in for Ricardo Pereira, uh, we've given him anchor. He obviously has already very good pace, but I actually like the defensive boost that anchor gives. So it's a nice plus 10 across the board, plus 5 on interceptions, a good 10 aggression, 5 strength and 10 jumping. And of course, he's really, really fast, high, high work rates, 4 star weak foot, very nice indeed. Uh, so good reactions, good dribbling. This is a strong, strong card. The only thing you can't do pretty much is shoot. Uh, we then move into Eric Bailly. And again, with a shadow chem style. Is that the full boost for Eric Bailly there? I think it is, yeah. So 15 slide tackle, 5 stand tackle, 10 marking, 5 heading and 10 interceptions. Obviously, his physical is already very good. And the pace boost takes him up to really high pace. 89 sprint speed. And what is it? 82 acceleration. So his reactions aren't the best, which is definitely a stat that I really like, which is probably why he's gone really cheap this year. And someone like uh, Davidson Sanchez and Van Dijk are the, the go-to guys. But for a, a, a standard, as I say, this team is about just finding yourself. You know, if you want something concrete, you want something that's going to work and you want to just be able to be like, OK, let me just go back to my go-to team and then expand from there. This is what you're going to be wanting to use. Next up, we've got Socrates. <clears throat> Excuse me, again, just a really well-rounded card. I know he's not the fastest, 
but you actually get up to 83 sprint speed and 79 acceleration with the shadow chem style you get huge boosts across the board defensively and he's another one where his physicals are already really good he's got really nice reactions really nice composure medium high work rates which is absolutely perfect and six foot one inches tall and then luke shaw 511 high medium not great on weak foot and skill moves but his card is nice it's really well rounded it's quite well balanced it's not exceptional in any regard and that's why you don't want to be getting caught with this guy trying to do crossing or passing moves or get him into the attacking areas you just want to use him for what he's used for you just want to defend with him get the ball back and maybe use him linking up the play because his passing isn't the greatest either you can see there are short passes vision is long pass aren't great so don't try any fancy passes with him no incredibly long through balls or cross field balls you just want to do the simple stuff with luke shaw you want to find that either center back or center mid in front of you and just give them the ball so that they can drive the rest of the uh the the, the game forwards into the midfield we're actually going to be using mctarian in a cam as i said i like i like this card on basic i think it's really well rounded for an 84 rated that costs 10,000 coins that has four, has four star skill moves and a five star weak foot that has the this many greens in his stats this is a great great card five star weak foot this year i think is going to be super super important as the year goes on people are going to realize more and more that five star weak foot players are going to be overpowered players we then move on to our next midfielder which is ndidi now ndidi and gay are again just there to be people that break up the play however I do like my CDMs and my center mids to be able to pass the ball, which is why we've sacrificed pace on Ndidi without giving him a shadow and given him the powerhouse uh, chem style that boosts his defending and his passing. So already his physicals are unreal, a little low on strength, but generally speaking, pretty unreal. The powerhouse gives him such a huge boost in his defensive stats as well and such a huge boost in passing that he actually goes up to like 88 short pass 81 long pass and 77 vision he becomes a good passer of the ball a great defender a good strong man and he has good pace as well and then of course coupled with the fact that he's medium high six foot tall four star weak foot fantastic card and you do just want this indeed card to be a destroyer and then we also move on to adrissa gay now I actually have a shadow on him, but once again, medium high work rates, which is ideal. He's already got decent passing, not the greatest, but decent. And then with the shadow, he gets 90 acceleration, 80 sprint speed, exceptional defensive stats. And once again, like Ndidi, he already has really, really good physical stats. So you can use him in those areas to just break up the play very, very well. So that is our midfield. And then up front, we actually run the 4-2-3-1 when I switch into it. So we're going to have the left cam is going to be Rashford. We have given him the sniper chem style. Good boost to his positioning and finishing, which is really important. And his shot power, which is really important. He gets a good boost to his passing because I want that curve up. I want that short pass up for when we do cross with him and pass in the box. And he already has exceptional pace anyway. And then, of course, he has four star, four star. And he's six foot one, which is just amazing. And we have on the right hand side, Lucas. Uh, Lucas for me is a tricky one because his lack of stamina does cause problems in late game. Um, but his stats in general outside of that are absolutely phenomenal. And I've given him the maestro because I want to give him that reactions boost. That reactions boost up to 84 is really important. He gets really good shooting, really good passing and crossing and insane dribbling as well. You just you might want to have a good player on the bench, maybe one of your untradeables or something like that just so that you can look at Lucas and sub him off. Now, I've actually got a bench full of players. I don't make any subs at all throughout the whole set of games. And then last but not least, we've got Lacazette. Now, again, I haven't given him a pace boost. I've gone for Sniper. I improved that dribbling. I improved that shooting. So the finishing, the volleys, and the positioning are just as high as they can be. He's got great dribbling. We get a plus five composure boost which is really, really nice. His agility and balance get boosted up. And that is what we have there with Alex Lacazette. As we move into the game plans, guys, I literally have, as I said, a one size fits all. So I started in a 4-3-3. This is the basic 4-3-3. I haven't changed it. Then the defensive and ultra defensive, I didn't change. The ultra attacking, I didn't change. I just changed the attacking formation, the 4-2-3-1, which is what we swap, swap into at kickoff every game. I'm sure you guys can already understand what the team looks like, but if you can't, here it is. Lacazette up top, Mkhitaryan in the cam, Lucas and Rashford on the wings, Idrissa Gay and Ndidi in defense, it would have defense midfield areas, and then the back line remains the same. And in terms of instructions, Lacazette is stay central and getting behind, Idrissa Gay is stay back while attacking, and Ndidi is default. Uh, and because we've given Ndidi the passing boost, 
The reason why I don't want him to necessarily stay back while attacking is because I do want him to link up the play between the midfielders, the the you know the wingers, the attacking midfielder and a striker, and then the defensive midfielders and the defenders. So he's kind of like a middleman in there, and and because he's got already good stats, good stamina and stuff like that, I can just run him around manually myself. I can keep chasing him back. So you know when I'm when I lose possession of the ball, you'll actually see it a lot of times in this gameplay gameplay. When I lose possession of the ball, I try and find Ndidi to switch to and run him back because I already know Idrissa Gay is going to be deep there. Uh, in terms of the actual tactics themselves, so we've set it to drop back really narrow in terms of width. Uh, I want to just completely solidify myself in the, in the central areas. If these guys want to go down the wings, cross and get headers, so be it. If And if that's how they end up beating me, so be it. But not many people utilize that as much as they can do i don't think many people at this stage realize just how overpowered crossing is in this game so we don't see it utilized too much so we're, we're playing the odds here you know we're playing the numbers we're basically going to say i'm betting i'm guessing that my opponent is going to try and go centrally and so i'm covering those angles so we've got low width and low depth because we obviously want our team to sit back and then in terms of attack we actually have high width because i want to get the ball out there to rashford and out there to lucas in as much space as possible we don't put many players in the box because I don't want to get caught out on counter attacks. So our two CDMs will stay nice and deep and it'll basically just be our four attackers that are playing up front. Corners and free kicks is default and we just play a balanced defensive style and we're going to do all the work. So that guys is the squad and the tactics, the game plan. Let's get into some action and see how this team plays in Division 4. Okay, guys, so as we go into the gameplay, the first opponent we come up against has got a really nice 4-3-3 team. Alexis Sanchez, Gabriel Jesus, Player of the Month Lucas, Henrik Mkhitaryan, uh, Davinson Sanchez, the fuck champions Eric Bai. You know, this is a better squad than us. And of course, we're playing against people of an equal skill level because we were in Division 4 in fuck rivals, and that's how it works. So I didn't really know what to expect, and, and I've told you guys uh, in the last episode, you know, during the best team in FIFA, we're going to be taking a lot more losses this year than last year. Obviously, last year i was just playing in divisions it was generally quite easy uh but i actually like now that the best team in fifa is going to be a really viable option for a series because i'm really going to have be able to show you guys uh how well it can work in high divisions now the first thing i want to know and the first thing i want to show you guys is that pickford is one of those places one of those players that you guys might want to upgrade immediately he parries a lot he rarely catches the ball it just it parries a lot, as you can see. You know, I showed you a few examples there. Um, for what we've got here for a hundred thousand coins, uh, you know, and even if you took out Lucas and put in, for example, say Shakiri, you would again be at one hundred thousand coins. I think this team is exceptional, and again, I don't necessarily think that this is a price range that is too expensive for people. Like, even if you picked up the game brand new today. Because of how you can do all the advanced SBCs, uh, you know, some of the other SBCs, the basic SBCs that are just nice and cheap, you could do the Lucas SBC to get yourself packs. It's very, very easy to generate 100,000 coins. If you've had the game for more than a week, you've already got Fuck Champs rewards, Fuck Rivals rewards, Squad Battles rewards, and you've already been playing the game a lot, so you built up a nice little bank. So I don't think that there's any excuse for anyone to not have 100,000 coins at this stage. But even if you didn't, just by taking out Lacazette and Rashford, you would be, you know, and, and replacing them for two just lesser players, essentially. I don't know who we would put there, but just two lesser players. You, you would reduce this down to a 60,000 coin squad. So if you've just got a left wing and a striker in there, you can just pop them in, no problem at all. So one of the things that's the most important thing about this team and how it plays is the fact that you have four-star skillers in a cam, left like left cam, right cam, and striker. Uh, I've, I've been really utilizing the La Croqueta recently. It's basically the Iniesta skill move. The way you complete it is with four-star or five-star skillers, you hold left bumper or LB, and you do what would essentially be a ball roll. And it kind of shimmies the ball between two of the feet. And it's a really good way to open space and utilize space. And you will see me use it in the games going forwards. Uh, and, and I'll explain there and then why it's going to be important. So into game number two, we come up against a really good squad. Neuer, Boateng, Alaba, Taliso, Goretzka, Thiago, Kimmich, James Rodriguez, Inform Werner. And Kingsley Coman alongside Toprak as the final player in that back line. And, and I looked at this team and I thought, okay, this is going to be a really, really good, tough test. And the player that I came up against was was just a really, really solid, strong player. Uh, and I, I was finding it hard to create chances and break him down. But I thought I should have got a penalty and potentially a red card there. Uh, it said that I took the shot. The commentator said that I got the shot away, which meant that was a foul from behind. So I don't understand how I didn't get... 
the penalty and the red card. And then what we talked about when building the team, you know, I said that this team, this formation, these tactics that we're building, it is to play the odds. It is to try and find people that won't acknowledge the fact that we're very, very central. Uh, as you see me there, get a good chance off, off of doing three La Croquettas. You know, people won't acknowledge the fact uh, that we're, we're playing a really, really narrow team and narrow formation. Well, this guy, as I said, he was a good player and he realized what I was doing. He scored the first goal with Kingsley Coman from a cross. The second goal came in from a corner that eventually I couldn't clear. Got into uh, Coman on the edge of the box, pops it wide, chips it back in. The bicycle kick comes off the post. If that wasn't bad enough, another deflection in the box, another deflection in the box, and Coman is the one there to wrap that one home. So, a bit of a scrappy goal there after I missed a sitter with Lacazette. i tell you what I did as well there with Lacazette. When the ball came in off the post uh, with Mick Terrant, I actually thought I'd scored. So, I was pressing, I was going to just press triangle or Y to do a celebration, and I ended up not scoring the shot. And so, I just basically threw ball the ball back towards uh, the the attacker that was standing behind Lacazette. And then the third goal for this guy came again from a Kingsley Coleman from a cross, and he absolutely utilised and exposed the fact that we had a very narrow formation, and he thoroughly deserved the win. You can see there, I held a little bit more possession than him, but in general, he created so many more opportunities and thoroughly deserved the win. Into the next game we go, we come up against a 96 chem 85 rated team, but with some exceptional players, Pogba, Ericsson, Kong, Dogbia, Son, Varan. Oblak, these are great players. Informed the Marcos. What's really weird about this team is he has just a random Rodrigo up front. Like, you've got a La Liga team here. You can just put Pogba up front, put Rodrigo, convert him down to a centre mid, and then boom. All of a sudden, you've now got a team that works way better for chemistry, and you could just change them in-game. However, he scored the first goal from a corner there. Paul Pogba jumping up, uh, hitting the dab on me to, when he made it 1-0. But uh, already at 20 minutes in, I was completely dominating this game and I was confident I'd be able to get back into it and that's exactly what happened. Henrik McTarian here, the ball roll threads it through to Marcus Rashford who cuts that across uh, to Lacazette. Lacazette hits the post with it. Can you believe that's so bad? And eventually it finds McTarian which uh, finesses it and again it hits the post. Rashford stabs home the rebound and makes it 1-1 with a, a good team goal in the end. And uh, just a few minutes after that we get back down the right hand side here with Lucas. There's the La Croqueta that I was talking about. I get a bit lucky to get the ball back. Thread that one through to Idrissa Gay. Waits for McTarian. A great time to finesse shot there from Henrik McTarian to make it 2-1. Uh, and at this point, I was just really in control of the game. And of course, I'm going to hit him back with the dab. And then just a few minutes before the game is up, we go wide out right to... Uh, Sorry, he goes wide out right to his uh, fullback, but Rashford steals in, plays the one-two, gets in behind, and here's another La Croqueta into the space. Lovely finesse shot for 3-1. And I couldn't believe it. This guy rage quit here. For me, didn't make a single shred of difference that he rage quit. For him, he loses out on 150 points in rivals for losing and 90 points for scoring a goal. So he misses out on 240 points. In the 90th minute, what are you doing, pal? Just stick it out for the last few seconds of the game and get your points. It's unnecessary to be able to, you know, it's unnecessary to rage quit there. But hey, man, each to their own. We take a nice big 3-1 win and that's now two wins, one loss from our three games. And that leads us into the fourth and final game. And even, you know, this is Division 4 with matchmaking with a 100k team. And I'm coming up against teams that are considerably more expensive and considerably better than this team. And so, with that in mind, two wins, two losses would have been just fine. And again, we come up against a team here that is just great. Perisic, Icardi, Alan, Emre Chan, Skriniar, Manolas, Chesney, Florenzi, Dalbert, Bakayoko and Balde Diao are a little bit weak. You know, Dalbert isn't the worst, but he's not the best defender either. Bakayoko can definitely be exposed this year. And uh, I, I just, I don't like the look of Balde Jao. I don't think he's got a very good card at all this year. I think he's a lot of pace and not a lot else. But we end up working the wing really well here. McTarian threads this one through to Marcus Rashford. There's another La Croqueta from Rashford, another finesse shot from Rashford, and another goal from Rashford to make it 1-0 after 26 minutes. And then eventually we made it 2-0 with about 20 minutes left on the clock. And here you'll see again the La Croqueta coming up trumps. There's Lucas in the box, La Croqueta's inside, flips it to Lacazette, who slots that one past the goalkeeper to make it 2-0. And again, we get a rage quit. I couldn't believe this guy rage quit. Like this, in fuck rivals, I, I haven't had many rage quits in FIFA at all this year. And I've played about 400 games. I probably had like six rage quits in total. So to get two out of four games here tonight shows how 
powerful and strong this team is and how much it frustrates people. So that, guys, is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy this, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Go try this team out. It will be amazing for you. It will be a really good foundation for you to build from. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.